Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money. All in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then, you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify, and when you want to take conversations with your fans at the next level, Q&A and polls are the best way to get them talking. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for Podcasters, my dream of creating a podcast was made easy. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started today. Hello, you guys. Welcome to a new podcast episode. I know it's been so long and I say this every time and every time. I'm not consistent, but I think right now we're on the schedule of one podcast a month. So for now that works, but I really, really want to start getting more consistent with it. Anyways, today's podcast episode is going to be me answering and giving you my advice, opinions, or answering any questions that you asked. I put a little question box up on my Instagram a few days ago, and I got lots of feedback from you guys. So we are going to go through all of that, but first there is one thing I want to talk about and address. So every time I post something on TikTok about sunscreen, getting sunburned, the sun, everyone has something to say about it. And it gets a lot of hate and no one understands where I'm coming from. And I mean this in the nicest way possible. Like, I don't even know how to put this. Like, what we are programmed to believe is wrong. And no one wants to hear that and that's what everyone tries to fight is that we do not need sunscreen to go in the sun. In fact, it's the complete opposite. Because the sun heals us. The sun repairs our DNA. And that's what they don't want you to know. That's what is hidden from us. That's why we're told you need to put sunscreen on. You need to lather these chemicals onto your body. These chemicals are going to protect you. Where do you think that sunscreen goes? It gets absorbed into your skin, goes into your bloodstream and you are putting toxins and chemicals into your body. Now, another thing is that you can protect your skin from the inside out, meaning your diet has a lot to do with the fact of whether or not you will burn going into the sun. Not only that, of course, the amount of time you spend in the sun is going to have an effect. If you are a person that burns easily, wear a shirt, wear a hat, Protect your skin in other ways that don't involve lathering chemicals onto your skin. Because putting toxins into the body is only going to make you burn more. Because the more toxins and chemicals that are in your body are going to cause that reaction with the sun to burn your skin. Anyways, back to the food. If you are eating a clean diet, such as, for example, foods like carrots, blueberries, and watermelon, actually protect your skin from the inside out. But anyways, that's a topic for another time. If you want to see what it's about, go check out my TikTok because a lot of people have something to say about it. All of the information that I got, I don't just pull it out of nowhere. I get from Mama Shell on TikTok. I trust her. I listen to her. So if you want to check it out, go check out her TikTok. But I'm not going to be addressing any of the comments that I get on my TikTok because it's pointless. People are speaking from judgment and from their egos, so we'll let them keep those opinions. But anyways, let's get into the questions or advice, yeah, advice questions that we got from you guys on my Instagram. The very first one, we'll start out with something similar to what we were just talking about. It says, how to vibrate at a higher frequency. So if you guys didn't know, there is this thing called the frequency scale. Of course, everyone vibrates at their own frequency. Everything on earth, every emotion has its own frequency. The highest frequency is enlightenment, followed by love, joy, compassion, all of those super positive emotions. 
Enlightenment stands at about 700 on the frequency scale. And all the way at the bottom, we have fear, guilt, shame, anger. Those vibrate all the way at the bottom. So anytime you're feeling any of these different emotions, you will be able to tell where you are vibrating on the frequency scale. Now, for example, if you are a person who consumes alcohol, alcohol vibrates at 175 on the frequency scale. So if you normally vibrate, let's say at about 500, your vibration is going to get brought all the way down. And you do not want to like hurt your frequency by consuming alcohol because it's going to take days for you to get your frequency back up to where you were vibrating at before you consumed that alcohol. For example, another thing is marijuana vibrates at about halfway on the frequency scale. Now, if you are a person who normally vibrates very high, if you do smoke or consume any of those things, it will bring your vibration down. So that's not beneficial. If you're a person who vibrates super low, it could potentially bring your vibration up, but that's not a sustainable way to bring your vibration up. So the question is, how do you vibrate at a higher frequency? The food you eat, the kind of activities you take, like, what's the word? The kind of activities you do, like, for example, gossiping, very low on the frequency scale. But if you do an act of kindness or show compassion to somebody or give something to somebody or show gratitude to something, that's going to help raise your vibration. Anything that is the emotion of love, anything that's the emotion of joy, compassion, if you take place in anything of those emotions, it's going to raise your frequency. So I hope that answers that question. Next, getting away from the spiritual world, we have a question that says, or not a question, it's just a statement. And it says, having a different body is normal. And every single person on this earth has a different body. And the only thing that puts into our mind that there is a standard body type is the internet, social media. Because every person is unique and every person's body is designed for them. Like you have everything you need. Your body is the home for your soul. And so you must take care of it. That doesn't mean physically. It means physically and mentally. You have to feed your home kind thoughts. So no matter what your body type is, you have to be kind to it. You have to love it. And once you start loving it, you'll feel more comfortable in it. Next question is, or there's kind of a bunch that kind of go into one. One says, getting to where I'm at, and I believe that means how to get to where I'm at spiritually. And then the next one says, how to learn more about spirituality and how to live a fulfilling and enjoyable life. So I, we'll start with how to learn more about spirituality. Books are a great first step. That's kind of where I started. I started getting some very, very basic, simple knowledge from YouTube. I started from learning about the law of attraction, and once you get way more deep into spirituality, you learn that the law of attraction is kind of like the basic common sense, if that makes sense. Even though to some people, like, when you're first learning, it seems like, oh my gosh, this is a huge secret, like, why is no one talking about it? But it's like, at the end of the day, we all kind of know that whatever you think about happens, if that makes sense. But I would start with books. YouTube is also a great source, but make sure you are following someone that is trustworthy and you'll be able to tell that from your gut and from your intuition. One of my favorite people that I learned from is Mama Shell on TikTok. She's on Instagram. She's on YouTube. She's great. Um, but books definitely are the best source, I would say. And I have many books. For example, right now I'm reading Seed of the Soul. It's absolutely amazing. I'm learning so much from that book, and I definitely want to share a lot about that with you guys when I'm finished. But I also just read The Mastery of Love. I read The Mastery of Self. Some other books I have are The Power of Intention. Ask and It's Given was the first book I read. Um, I have the huge Law of Attraction collection by Esther and Jerry Hicks. 
Be Here Now by Ram Dass is amazing. Um, a Course in Miracles is a classic that everyone needs to get. The Power of Now, also a staple, like one you should probably start with. Um, a New Earth, also by Eckhart Tolle. I would read Power of Now, then go A New Earth. But also, I um, The Wisdom of Insecurity by Alan Watts. I'm reading that one right now also. But that's all I'm seeing on my bookshelf from right now. But A Course in Miracles is definitely, definitely one of the top three you need because that one is amazing. It goes super in depth on a lot of things and it's really complicated to understand at times, but whenever I read that one, I kind of just flip open to a page and read what it has to say and take in take it in for that day. So, how to get where I'm at with spirituality? It kind of just takes like listening to your intuition and listening to like your gut and like trusting that you know the answers inside you. Um, Also, it takes kind of stepping away from society, if that makes sense, but like spiritually, not physically, but like being more cautious of the things you are ingesting and the information you are taking in and who you are listening to, who you are believing. I would say that's probably... Also, like the food you consume, the things you consume, because... You want to make sure you're not putting chemicals into your body or like toxins. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll eat a frozen pizza every once in a while. But I'm once you become very cautious of like the things you put in, you are very cautious of like, I don't know, you're very aware. Like you become aware of how you feel. And when you feel good, you're like you're emotionally, you're vibrating high, if that makes sense. I don't know. You, to get... Like, you just kind of have to follow your own path because everyone awakens when they're supposed to and everyone goes at their own rate and it all is in divine timing. So you just have to trust yourself and you have to go with the flow and the pace at which you feel is right for you. There's no right answer for that. So, yeah. Next, we have how to live a fulfilling and enjoyable life. I think this kind of goes with the last one. Like, you just kind of have to listen to you. If something feels right, do more of it. If something doesn't feel right, step away from it. Like, you just have to listen to yourself and follow your intuition. So, what else do we have here? Okay, we have starting a social media career. Don't care what other people think. That is the one thing that's going to hold you back, is if you are worried about, oh, I can't post this because these people might think this, or this person might, like, no. You have to post what you want to post, and not worry what anyone else has to say. And you have to be consistent. Consistency is the answer, and you will be successful, I promise. Okay, next we have one that I feel like I can resonate with. It says how to let go of people in a kind way. So this is normal and it's something that not a lot of people talk about and not a lot of people do because in our lives we feel like, I mean, of course, relationships. You walk away from relationships, you close relationships, you don't talk to those people any longer. But people who are your friends or who have been your friends for a very long time, there's a very negative like stigma around like, breaking friendships off or not being friends with anyone anymore but if you don't feel something is right deep down or if your like soul is causing calling you to evolve and this other person isn't and if they're holding you back you need to let go you need to do what's best for you and it's not selfish because selfishness doesn't exist selfishness is a very low frequency emotion and it comes from fear And love and fear are two separate things and they cannot exist at the same time. Love is the absence. No, fear is the absence of love. I'm sorry. So anyways, how do you let go of people in a kind way? That's up to you. You have to listen to your soul. And if something doesn't feel right, you let this person go. And the other person might get angry. The other person might react. 
but they'll figure it out and they'll understand and everything happens for a reason and you need to follow your heart but the kindest way I would say is maybe just explain yourself like truthfully because the truth is what will set you free so you just need to truthfully explain in the kindest way possible and don't argue don't blame don't victimize none of those negative emotions you want to keep it kind I guess because that's the word we used here kind loving compassionate you want to keep letting go of this person in those high emotions and tell them in the nicest way and if they don't react nicely that's it that's the end of it you don't have to respond and then the next one kind of goes with that it says friendships that don't add value to your life or past friendships how to let them go same thing if someone's not adding value to your life anymore that means it's time for that relationship to be finished because there's no use putting your energy into something that is not helping you evolve because you will find people in your life that will help you evolve so that's your sign that it's time to let that go and how to let go same as i said before you can do it in the nicest way possible you explain yourself truthfully the situation and that's that so next we have how to stay positive how to find inspiration or how to find motivation so this can be difficult because i know for me especially some days i wake up super motivated super inspired and i get all these ideas and like I want to get so many things done in like one single day or like I'm just so on track and like maybe I'll do so many things that one day and then the next day I'll wake up and I'm like that's it like I don't want to do social media anymore like I have no ideas like just like all these negative thoughts will flow through but when that happens I try to remind myself that I will find my inspiration again and I will find my motivation again and I feel like sometimes Like, I can't explain where it comes from or why I get it, but it's almost like it happens randomly. Like, last night I had a dream, and in my dream I made this TikTok, and then when I woke up, I woke up feeling super inspired today, and I was like, wow, like, I think that was a sign. Like, I think my dream was telling me I should make this TikTok if I'm going to be successful. I don't know. We could talk about dreams in a whole nother podcast episode, because recently I've been getting really into dreams, and... I don't know the dream world is something different and it's special but how to find inspiration get outside like I think being outside definitely helps me stay creative and gives me different ideas but I feel like recently I've been struggling with how to be like creative in a different way because oh there's a lot of people that do social media of course and it's very hard to be original I feel like because a lot of people are doing the same thing and so recently I've been struggling with like how to make my content different and so I'm kind of in like a stuck position right now so I I feel like I honestly cannot give a good answer to this question besides get outside Pinterest helps sometimes like scrolling on Pinterest I get some ideas but I don't know I have to find my new creative inspiration but how to stay positive don't dwell on the negatives and I know sometimes it's super hard to get out of your head and it's super hard to like get out of a bad mood but maybe sometimes it's even the simplest thing is getting an ice cream cone or like getting a cold glass of water like the simplest things will bring you back into that state of gratitude and happiness and then that brings you back into a positive mind So I feel like it's whenever something happens that's not so positive, just think of it as there's good that's going to come out of this because everything happens for a reason and everything happens in divine timing. So if something doesn't work, it's leading you to something better. Or if something gets taken out of your life, it got taken out because room needed to be made in your life for something better to come in. So I feel like keeping a positive mindset is all about the perspective that you have on life. So if you have the perspective that anything could happen and life is a miracle, you're going to be granted miracles. And of course, it's easier to stay positive when positive things happen, but it's the opposite. Also, positive things will happen because you're staying positive. So I would find the little things that make you happy and it will make a significant difference in your mindset, I feel like. Books I read, we kind of already addressed that. 
I listed some books from my bookshelf, but I really love reading books about spirituality. I find it really hard to stay interested in books like storybooks and like fiction and that kind of stuff. Although I do like poetry and that's something I kind of want to get into is like writing poems because I don't know, I feel like my Instagram captions sometimes can like be very poetic, I feel like. And it's very fun for me to write in that way. But Next, we have how to clear your mind, stop overthinking. So, I'm an overthinker, definitely. But what helps me, I feel like, is reading. Because sometimes, if your mind is racing, sometimes the hardest thing to do is to sit down and read a book because you're going to read. But as you're reading, your mind's going to be still racing. And then you're like, wait, I didn't even read that page. Like, what did I just read? So then you have to go back and you have to reread the page. I find that like that used to happen to me a lot but the more I read and the more I've gotten into reading it has actually helped calm my mind down so I feel like maybe start with like something simple like maybe start with like a short little poem book and if you're finding yourself overthinking or your mind is racing like take out the book focus on the book tune into the book read the two little sentences of the poem and start conditioning your mind to be fully present in the moment because that's what happens when your mind is racing and when you can't stop thinking it's because you're not present in the moment so you need to find the little things that do ground you and that do bring you back into that present moment meditation is a very powerful thing i struggle with this i still do not meditate i still cannot bring myself to meditate i don't know it's very difficult and it's something that i really need to start doing but meditation 100 percent can help you clear your mind and stop overthinking Because when you do this, you will become aware. And when you are aware, you are living in the present moment. Someone said, how to not feel guilty about going away for college. I would say, if you are feeling called to go away for college, that means there are opportunities waiting for you. There are people waiting for you. And exactly, there are things waiting for you that you need to experience so don't feel guilty because wherever you're leaving you always have that to go back to but you won't always have the opportunity to go away to school so i would take that opportunity and i would run because you were gifted this opportunity and so you should take it and for the sole reason of not feeling guilty just look at the positive of what is out there waiting for you Next, we have being in a stage of a relationship when you're unsure how they feel or if it's going anywhere. So first thing that pops into my head is if you are unsure about how they feel about you or about anything, it's probably not going to work out because you should never be unsure of anything. And if you're unsure... That's not a great sign because love doesn't make you unsure. Like love makes you feel loved. Love makes you know you're loved. So if you're unsure, I would take it as a lesson almost and like be grateful that you were able to realize that you're unsure because that means you have the awareness and you were aware of being unsure And so you have the opportunity to choose. And when you're presented with a choice, if you don't choose, you may be presented with a situation you don't want to into. Oh my gosh, you may be presented with a situation you don't want to encounter. So if you have the choice, I would choose. And if you're unsure, I would choose to not pursue it any longer. Or if you're unsure, straight up ask. And then you have your answer. And if you don't get a clear answer, that made your choice for you. So we'll finish this with the last one that I have here, and it says letting people in. This can be very difficult. I know for me, like, I don't open up to people. I don't even really like meeting new people. Like, I don't like socializing with new people. I'm very closed off and quiet unless I'm, like, intrigued by someone or, like, really, like, want to get to know someone. I don't know. So that's a difficult one. But go into it with an open mind and that's what I should tell myself also is because like 
I don't know. Sometimes I get in these moods where I just don't want to socialize with anyone. And I'll be in a situation with new people and I just won't talk to them. And then I get in my head and I'm like, wow, these people probably think I'm so rude. But then also I'm like, well, I don't want to talk to them. So like, but that's wrong. Like you should give everyone an equal and open opportunity to talk to you and meet to you and meet you and that's what I also need to learn myself so letting people in I would say go into it with an open mind and be vulnerable because we all have something to learn from being vulnerable but yeah I'm gonna end this here that was a pretty long podcast episode I think one of the longer ones we've done but the next one I want to do is I want to talk to you guys about alcohol and I want to talk to you all about that in the next podcast episode I've kind of been preparing for this one for a while. I've been doing a lot of research. I've been getting a lot of facts because I want to back up the things that I say so that I don't like get negative feedback on it in a way of people saying like, well, where are you getting your information from? So I've been doing a lot of research on that for a while and that's going to be the next episode. So it will come when it's meant to come. We'll leave it at that for the next episode, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and yeah, thank you so much for listening. I will see you next time.